Hello, this is Noseman from the Maxon training team. And in today's quick tip, I'm going to show you how to make simple fireworks using Cinema 4D's new particle system. In this new scene, let's go and create a basic emitter and uh, let's make it point upwards. I'm just going to rotate it and snap it to 90 degrees. I'm going to make it 400 centimeters long and uh, maybe five wide. So all the particles are emitted from a straight line. Excellent. Now let's go to the particle emitter and just shoot three particles per second. So let's press play and you will see that we get some particles that are going upwards. Fantastic. Let's rewind and I'm going to extend my timeline to 900 frames. Now let's add a bit of gravity to these particles. So go to the simulate, go to forces and add a gravity object. I'm just going to set this to be quite small, so 30 centimeters, and put it as a child of the particle group. Now you can always go and rename these, but I'm going to leave them as they are now. And you will see that now we're getting the particles that are going a bit slower. Now I want to change their direction slightly. So I'm going to rewind and I'm going to go to the basic emitter, go to the properties, and I'm going to twirl down the direction and just add a bit of a spread. I think something around 45 degrees will do. And this will allow the particles to go in all sorts of interesting directions. There you go. So these are the main particles that are our fireworks, but <laughs> this is not good enough. So let's go and create some uh, explosions uh, at certain uh, time frames. Now, if I press play, you will see that pretty much they reach their apogee, their, their uh, highest point, around 122 frames. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use a condition. So go to simulate conditions and let's get a condition. And I'm going to put it after the gravity. The condition is going to check if the age is inside a certain range. So between 100 and 150 frames. And I'm going to give it a chance of 30%. So we get a bit more randomness. And what's going to happen in this particular case, we are going to get these particles to reproduce. So let's go to the simulate menu and go to the emitters and get a reproduce emitter. And I'm going to make it a child of the condition. When we added the reproduce, it also created a new group that will hold these reproduced particles. I'm just going to name this explosion. And now you'll see that the reproduce is linking to that explosion group. I want to generate 1500 particles per particle. And the moment these are born, I want to kill the source to get rid of the original particle. I also want to change their lifetime. I'm going to set the lifetime to have uh, an expectation of uh, uh, 10 frames uh, with maybe a spread of five for variance. And let's go and uh, rewind and press play and see what happens. So the particles are going to go upwards and then we are going to get these beautiful explosions. And that's pretty much how this setup works. You can adjust the values to make it look the way you want. Just for good measure, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the particle group and go to the MoGraph menu and add a tracer. So I can trace these particles. I'm going to call this tracer initial and then select the explosion and do the same thing. And I'm going to create a tracer and just put it here and type explosion. For the first one, I'm going to set uh, it to be from end with a length of uh, 30 frames and a variance of 10. And for the explosion, I'm going to set it from end with a length of three because we don't want them to be very long. And now rewind, press play and see your particles with a little trails and you can uh, assign some sort of uh, uh, hair rendering using redshift and make it look really nice. If you enjoy our quick tips, please like, comment, subscribe and enable notifications so you never miss another quick tip.